to the McKinnon Legal Podcast, your guide to brighter paths beyond challenging marriages. Here's your host, Christina McKinnon. Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome back to the McKinnon Legal Podcast. I'm your co-host, Jeremy Wolf, joined by none other than your host. We have Christina McKinnon in the house. Hello, everybody. Hey, happy March. Ha- happy Women's History Month, everyone. It is. And women's Jeremy, history. how are you doing this Women's History Month? Are you celebrating your women women in your life? Uh, always. <laughs> always. Is there you another better. way to do it? I, I have I have my life to thank to that, of course. So, <laughs> you know it. You know it. So and Everything it, it good is, that happens in your life is because of your wife. I want you to know that. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And it, it is Friday. We actually have uh, Cooper City Founders Day tomorrow, mm-hmm. a nice family day out. Uh, in the sun. Hopefully the weather is good for that. So super excited for that. Okay. All righty. Well, um, maybe I'll take a trek out there, uh, depending on weather permitting. Sir, yeah. Certainly uh, we uh, have gotten some pretty stormy weekends lately. So um, maybe I'll see you out there. Yeah, I'll be there. Rain or shine, I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I thought a great topic for today would be for anyone out there that is looking for a family attorney. What are some considerations, some factors, some things to look for when someone is in that situation where they need to find an attorney, a family attorney specifically? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, people are looking for lawyers all day, every day. And, you know, Google may not always be the the best source for you to find a family law attorney. Uh, You can ask your friends, you could ask other um, attorneys maybe in another specialty or another area uh, in terms of who is good in the industry, what good family lawyers that they know out there. But it all boils down to, you know, great referrals uh, and people, they would hire people that they know, they like, and they trust, right? So how do you get known? You get known by developing connections, uh, by going out and making friends, not only with other attorneys, but with the soccer moms, with, you know, the martial arts dads, <laughs> with people in the community. If you're politically active, everybody gets divorced. Everybody has kids, you know, whether they are married or not, they have kids. So just knowing people, you get to have that strong sense of referrals that come into your office. So, Um, I would advise the potential new client uh, to ask the professionals that they already know if they know an estate planning lawyer um, that they go ahead and they, um, excuse me, let me just turn this down. Oh, you're good. They ask who's good in the family law industry. Okay. Um, Also, you have to be personable. For family law, you have to be empathetic. Um, You certainly have to be empathetic because uh, we deal with people at their most personal and private, you know, things that they wouldn't tell. Most emotional, most vulnerable time in their life, right? Absolutely. So it's not like any other area of law where it's, you know, the black letter law where it's cut and dry and, you know, you're analyzing the law to the facts. You still are doing that in family law, but the judges have a whole lot of discretion. Um, and to do the right thing, you know, the standard a lot of times is what's in the best interest of the child. And that's a weighing of factors. So if, you know, you have an attorney that you're consulting with and they just seem like they're just trying to get another client or, you know, you're just a number to them, then I say run. You want someone who you can connect with and that you feel comfortable sharing very personal information with. So I wanted to ask you a question. I'm curious. <clears throat> Do you find it more difficult to advocate and work for some work with someone that you know very well versus somebody that maybe you don't have that emotional connection to? Because I know obviously it's an emotional situation. And if you have a relationship with somebody um, beyond just the attorney client relationship and you have certain feelings in that regard, I could see how that could drive passions in one one direction or the other. What are your thoughts on that? 
Well, I mean, my personal view is I don't represent friends or family, right? I try not to. Yeah, um, and, you know, we have associate attorneys here in the office. If, you know, there were a family member, I would sort of let the associate handle it and I wouldn't handle it personally. I mean, certainly I, I'm, I'm human, right? Uh, no matter what you think, Jeremy, I am human. Um, so, <laughs> um, and I, I don't want that to cloud my judgment. I don't want that to cloud my, my level of professionalism. Um, in, in doing what's right for the client. And at that point, that person would be the client. But more importantly, I would refer that person um, to someone, you know, that I trust. I know, like, and trust as well um, sure. with my family member. That makes sense. That's kind of what I thought, because mm -hmm. again, emotions tend to run hot in these things. Mm -hmm. And if you have mm -hmm. a, a more more vested interest in it, it could cloud your judgment inadvertently, Absolutely. right? So you you want to try, you want to try extra, extra, extra hard because you have an emotional connection. Um, so aside from looking at obviously past experience, the, the reputation of the attorney, um, I, I think it's important also from where I sit to work with somebody that really has a specialization within that niche, right? Um, that's not practicing too many different areas of law that is really focused in on the task at hand. Can you talk a little bit about the importance of specialization within right. each area of law, specifically family law? Yeah, it, it is very important uh, that the person is almost like, or it can be considered to be the, the expert in that particular area. Um, so my philosophy is to niche down, right? Do maybe one or two practice areas, even with two personal injury and family, I still niche down a little bit more with the family law. Uh, the family law is my, my greatest concentration, um, because, you know, we want to make sure that we're giving the best representation to the client and I'm, my interests aren't divided with a criminal case a real estate matter, you know, a business transaction here, and that I'm learning all that I can in this particular area. Uh, we had a saying back in the day, and when I say back in the day, I'm talking about 20 years ago when I was coming coming out of law school and, you know, people were opening up shop or whatnot. Um, there were some type of attorneys, and I guess you, they're still around, uh, but they were more generalists, and we called them, you know, hey, they practice door law, right? What's a door? What's door law? Anything that comes through the door, they'll just go ahead and take the case and do it. Well, you know what? That is the quickest way to um, some sort of malpractice. That is the quickest way to some sort of complaint from a client. If you're not versed in the law, um, certainly you can become uh, versed in the law by researching and by, you know, putting forth the requisite effort and diligence uh, to come up to speed. But do you want to do that for every single case that comes in? No, you want to have a requisite level of knowledge uh, going into the case, do the research as needed uh, for specialized areas or complex areas of the law. But you should already be deemed uh, more like an expert in the Within field the, that you're practicing. Yeah. And, and that person coming in should have 100% confidence that you, you've seen this before. <laughs> that is not something novel or new. Uh, that you're doing. Yeah. When you said the door, door law or door, door lawyer, yeah. what came to mind was uh, better call Saul. <laughs> Is that what Saul does? I watched that show maybe one time, Jeremy, uh, but I don't know. I don't know much about it's a Saul. Great show. It's a great show. It's a great show. No, but he, he takes whatever, whatever case comes his way. Criminal <laughs> defense, elder law. It doesn't really matter what it is. <laughs> I don't know how successful Saul was. Didn't he like drive a like, you know, bum car and have practice out of a whatever? I don't know. <laughs> so how important is compatibility when it comes to finding the right family attorney? Because I can imagine a scenario where you get rec you get referred to the attorney with the most accolades, has great experience, great reputation, all the all the boxes check, and then you sit down with them and you just don't you don't jive with them, right? Like it's just there's no mm -hmm. chemistry. There. It doesn't seem like that's going to be a good working relationship. But they have such high accolades. But then you meet with somebody else that maybe doesn't have quite the reputation, but you seem mm -hmm. to get on better with them. You think you're going to have a better I guess a better chance of defense in that, in mm -hmm. that situation. How important mm -hmm. is the compatibility in that, in that situation? I mean, I rank it really high. Um, they, they uh, may not have the accolades as another person, but you know, in family law, this is a very personal um, area where you're sharing very private um, information. So yeah, for me, <laughs> 
my clients aren't my friends, but I think they believe that they are <laughs> my friends. Um, so, and that is important because, um, you know, I want them to be comfortable. I want them to be comfortable sharing what needs to be shared. Most people, when they come to you, they're not going to tell you everything, but it's important for me to know everything because I want to know even the bad stuff. I want to know the stuff that the other side is going to bring out um, and how to be prepared for it, how to anticipate it before I go to court, how to prepare an argument of something that may come. It may never come, but I want to be prepared in case it does. So in order for that person to feel that comfortable with me, um, you know, I have to get them on a level where they can share that secret stuff, you know, secrets that maybe their their spouse didn't even know about them or their best friend didn't know about them. But yes, absolutely. It is it is very important for compatibility, it is very important for likability, not liked just for the sake of being liked. I don't think I'm a type of person that, you know, needs to be liked, but my clients have to trust me. And for them yeah. to be able to trust me, they have to know me and they have to like me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because how could how could you ever be expected to offer a good defense if the client is not being honest with you, right? You have to really dig in and find out exactly what's going on, and they're not going to they're not going to open up if there's that's uncomfortability still very there. true. But guess what? It happens more oh, often I'm than you know. Um, clients lie all the time, and you know, not that they're bad. It's just that they don't want to be judged. Yeah. And, you know, I'm your lawyer. I'm not here to judge you, but I do need to know, you know, even the bad stuff or the stuff that you're embarrassed about, um, because it will come up. It's likely to come up in court. And if I'm not prepared for it, um, I don't like being blindsided. I don't like being ambushed in court. Um, so let me know and, and we'll prepare the best defense or minimize the effect of it. Yeah, I can see how that would be a tough one. Somebody's coming <laughs> in to see, to see an attorney and like they're expected to just spill the beans about every single personal thing, but you're a hundred percent right. If you don't go through it then, and it comes up in the middle of trial and you're, like you said, you're blindsided and then you know, you're not prepared and they can't get the best defense possible. So that, yeah, that is incredibly important. Absolutely. Yeah. So any, anything else that somebody should look for? I know we talked, again, we talked about experience, reputation, um, areas of specialization, empathy, all these things, maybe, uh, <clears throat> Should somebody get into like a strategy? I mean, maybe when they meet with you on a first consultation, is that something they should ask? Like, what is your typical strategy or what is it going to look like when we work yeah. together? You know, I play the long game in everything. I always look at the future. <laughs> so, you know, I think, you know, the, the key to success for anyone is, you know, let's see what the end is or what is our, our end game. You know, where am I going to be, you know, down the road? What does this divorce look like for me? So, yeah, absolutely. I want the clients to walk away from a consultation with um, a, a small strategy of where I think this, this case should go. But most importantly, if it's a high end or high net worth or high asset or high conflict case, um, you want someone who has the requisite experience with um, complex issues. Somebody who's not just going to do a simple divorce or paternity action or simple child support matter. You know, if there are high assets, you want to make sure that you have someone who has experience with a forensic accountant. All right. Yep. If there are DCF issues or domestic violence issues or just, you know, high conflict uh, alienation issues, you want to make sure you have experience with someone who uh, has Child uh, worked with a guardian ad litem, guardian ad litem, sure. if or or parenting coordinators, um, etc. If you have a um, a high conflict, I'm sorry, a high asset case, but you don't have a lot of the drama, you may want to consider a collaborative divorce, right? So you know there there are certain complex issues and certain experience levels. Uh, that you would want to look for and want to make sure that your attorney has experience with and longevity in the industry um, and the connections and the contacts uh, with these particular vendors that can help you with your case. Makes perfect sense. Well, Christina, I, I hope I hope that I never need to engage your services, but I feel like uh, if I ever do, I got a pretty good handle on what I need to do to make sure that I have the proper defense. So just, just do whatever your wife says, Jeremy, ah, especially yeah. this mom. <laughs> <laughs> My husband does. <laughs> do whatever our 
do whatever my wife says. Okay. I'll take that under advisement. Yeah. Thank you, counsel. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, that, I guess that wraps it up. It was, okay. Uh, again, always a pleasure seeing you. You have a wonderful weekend. Hopefully, I'll see you out at Founders Day. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> All right, weather permitting. Weather Good permitting. seeing you. And um, anyone that is looking for a great family lawyer, come check us out. See if we're right for you. But we'll certainly be seeing if you're right for us. Uh, Christina McKinnon at McKinnon-Legal.com, 305-416-0045 or toll free 877-920-1614. Thank you. Everyone have a wonderful day and take care. Thank you for joining us on the McKinnon Legal Podcast. Remember, there's always a path to a brighter, happier future. Stay tuned for more positive insights on troubled relationships and legal solutions. For more information, please visit McKinnon-Legal.com. That's M-C-K-I-N-N-O-N-Legal.com. Or call 877-920-1614.